uh, armistice was signed, you had got one, one by one disorders and uprisings in every single country of the Middle East. London and Paris are the only two governments left to settle matters in the Middle East. Italy has dropped out in disgust, and the United States has opted for isolationism. But Lloyd George is undeterred by such realities. He is determined to redraw the map in the Middle East and to add nearly a million square miles to the British Empire. In Ankara, General Kamal monitors the land-grabbing frenzy and bides his time. The new Turkish government and its army are about to make a reply. In 1918, after Russian troops have withdrawn, a new Armenian Republic is established in the Caucasus, with its capital in Yerevan. The Armenian government believes that its people have a historical claim to a large region in eastern Turkey. After the Ottoman Empire surrenders to the Allies, Yerevan sends its troops to occupy the area. But the Turkish nationalists also see the region as part of their traditional homeland. In the fall of 1919, Turkish troops commanded by General Kazim Karabakir advance against the Armenians and in a series of battles, steadily push them back toward the Caucasus. As the fighting continues for another year, the Western powers change their minds about helping Armenia and withdraw their support. In December 1920, the Armenian government signs a treaty with the Turkish nationalists. The following spring, Ankara signs another treaty with Vladimir Lenin in Moscow, and the eastern borders of Turkey are secured. As for the Armenian Republic, its independence is short-lived. Soviet troops and political commissars take control in Yerevan, and Armenia becomes part of the Soviet Union. It will not achieve independence again until 1991. While they drive Armenians out of the east, Kemalist forces also attack French and Armenian troops that occupy an area in southeastern Turkey known as Cilicia. From February to April of 1920, Turkish forces score several victories. The new French Prime Minister, Alexander Miron, is under pressure to demobilize the French army while still holding on to Syria. He orders his commanders to find a way out and start negotiating with Kamal. Lloyd George, on the other hand, rejects conciliation and sends British troops to occupy Istanbul. Churchill urges him to make peace with Kamal, believing that a solid agreement with Ankara is the best way to stop communist expansion. Meanwhile, the Soviets reach an understanding with the Turks. Moscow fears the growth of British influence in the Middle East, so it decides to support the Kemalist government and begins to funnel money and weapons to the Turkish nationalists. In the spring of 1921, French diplomat Henry Franklin Bouillon goes to Ankara and reaches an accord that ends the conflict in Turkey. Paris formally recognizes the legitimacy of the Ankara government and will no longer deal with the Sultan in Istanbul. The Treaty of Sevres is canceled and Lloyd George's carefully drawn map of the Middle East is now a meaningless piece of paper. Britain feels betrayed by this separate piece engineered by the French. London and Paris, two governments that suffered through the Great War together, are no longer allies in the war that continues in the Middle East. By October 1921, all French and Armenian forces are evacuated from Turkey. Now General Kamal and his army can focus on yet another enemy, the Greek army that lies to the west. In mid-June 1920, London approaches Greek Prime Minister Venizelos for help in defeating the Turkish nationalists, who have even begun to attack British troops in Istanbul. The Allies agree to let Greek forces advance from Izmir into Turkey, and on June 22nd, the invasion begins. By the following year, Greek troops have advanced deep into Turkish territory. An exultant Lloyd George proclaims, Turkey is no more. 
But the Turks themselves aren't convinced. Kemal plans to use the same